Hello everyone, I'm Jonath, a former intern with West Slope Youth Vote. Um, I've been in college for a year now, but I'm checking back in today uh, to discuss one particular bill moving through the state legislature that hits close to home for me. Uh, I attended Central High School in Grand Junction and they, along with every other school in Colorado, are potentially about to see a big and long needed change. I'm here to talk with you today about Senate Bill 21116, which would ban the use of American Indian mascots in schools across the state. Joining me today is my guest, Nicole Donaghy, the Executive Director of North Dakota Native Vote and a Hunkapapa Lakota from the Standing Rock Sioux Nation. In just five minutes, we're gonna break down for you the importance of this bill and why it matters to students like you and I. But before we jump in, I want to acknowledge the original protectors of the land we are on. What we refer to as the Western Slope of Colorado was inhabited by several indigenous tribes, the Ute, Ute Mountain Ute, and Southern Ute as well as the Pueblo in the South and the Shoshone in the Northern region. This acknowledgement is to reflect on and remind us of the first people of this land. Now, what is Senate Bill 21116? This bill would prohibit Native American mascots across the state in all schools, including colleges. Schools who currently have a Native American mascot would have a year until June, 2022 to work with their student body to select a new mascot. The bill imposes a fine of $25,000 per month for each month that a public school continues to use a mascot after such date, uh, payable to the state education fund. Now, there are a couple exceptions to this prohibition. Uh, firstly, if the school has a pre-existing agreement with a federally recognized tribe or creates an agreement that fosters goodwill and emphasizes education and a curriculum about American Indian history. And secondly, if the school is operated by a tribe or is on tribal land. Now, Nicole, from your perspective, why are bills like this so important for steps towards reconciliation? Thank you, Jonathan. Bills like this are important because it is a step that contributes to a long movement that works to prohibit mascots that are often rooted in racist stereotypes and disregard the personhood of who we are as Native people today. While many will state that having stereotypical, a stereotypical caricature of a native person is done in honor and to honor our people, that culture often comes along with racial, with a, uh, with, that comes along with racial mascotry is often insulting and promotes misnomers and stereotypes of our people. Native mascots were born in an era where racism um, and bigotry were acceptable by the dominant culture at the time, such as the name of uh, the Redskins, which is a racial slur. If you research the meaning, it goes back to a history of scalping people and identifying our people um, under that, that name. So abolishing native mascotry is not a new movement in this country, nor is it a part of the contemporary cancel culture. It is interlinked with many Native American civil rights issues that address the issues at the core of our identity, such as land-based conservation, treaty rights and language revitalization, just to name a few. Indian mascotry is harmful and creates a standard that white society sets the moral standard while native people are often portrayed as a noble savage. James Gray wrote that it has ever been the way of the white man in his relation to the Indian to first sentimentalize him as a monster until he's been killed off. And second, to sentimentalize him in retrospect as the noble savage. The Noble Savage has been ingrained into modern culture and films that unabashedly mimic our culture and unabashedly mimic our people, which is often very incorrect. It's degrading, especially to my people up here in the Northern Plains, which is often depicted in Hollywood and at baseball games and football games where you'll see the, the headdresses and the tomahawks. We're modern people, we're doctors, we're lawyers, we're community organizers, and we're contributors to society. We are more than what is portrayed on the big screen and what is what comes about with the, with the mascotry. The National Congress of American Indians has documented a comprehensive review of decades of social science research that states that derogatory Indian sports mascots have serious psychological and social and cultural consequences for Native Americans, especially, especially our Native youth. Of today's American Indian and Alaska Native populations, those under the age of 18 make up 32%, and Native youth under the age of 24 represent nearly half or 42% of the entire Native American population. Most concerning in considering negative stereotypes of Native people are the alarmingly high rates of crimes against Native people. 
According to uh, an analysis done by the Department of Justice, American Indians are more likely than other races to experience violence at the hands of someone of a different race because of the portrayal of how we are uh, savage, savage humans. These factors together indicate a very real need to take immediate action in a number of areas, including the, remo the removal of harmful images such as the Braves or the Warriors or the Indians, um, as well as integrating an, a robust education to the general public to diffuse additional hateful activity against our people and to also promote reconciliation and healing. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nicole. We really appreciate you bringing your perspective to the topic. Um, now we'd also like to talk about the role of students in relation to these topics. Uh, as students, this bill is creating an opportunity for us to address cultural appropriation within our schools and the harmful stereotypes used as mascots. My high school had a stereotypical Native American mascot in which we were the warriors. Our mascot was not the only piece of school culture that involved appropriation of Native American and tribal culture. Over the years, students wore headdresses to sporting events, there was a spirit stick tradition, and other stereotypically associated pieces, such as arrowheads, were implemented within a multitude of logos, attire, sports uniforms, etc. Additionally, it's important to recognize that language, such as referring to social groups as tribes or the pop culture use of spirit animals, also perpetuates this cultural appropriation. In regards to making these steps towards reconciliation, I think it is important we are all able to recognize the fragility many of us have when it comes to confronting historical wrongdoings, as well as ways in which we have individually contributed to perpetuating harmful circumstances. As we start making these steps and confront the past and our own actions, it is important we all know it's okay to have been wrong or made mistakes. It doesn't mean that we're bad people, but that we must learn and understand to correct these mistakes. This includes correcting ourselves and working against harmful habits we have created in our daily language. This bill is a way for us all to recognize the harm Native American mascots have created nationwide in standby natives nationwide in our communities and who are peers in our school. Nicole, is there anything else you'd like to touch on about this bill? Yes, I'd like to add that if you really truly want to honor our people, you should take a look into our history and support the movements that we have, uh, protecting our right to vote, protecting our culture, our history, and our language revitalization. Learn about the inhabitants, the first inhabitants, uh, where you live and where you're at. You'll find a rich history that goes beyond the stereotypes that are ingrained into this culture. Thank you so much again for bringing your perspective to the topic. Um, and thank you everyone for tuning into this conversation. For this and other content like it, you can follow us on YouTube and Facebook. Thank you so much.